Antarctica, a harsh, frozen, inhospitable wasteland. It's no surprise that expeditions to this harsh environment, especially in the early days, were met with disaster. I'm your host, James, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 mysterious Antarctica expeditions that ended in disaster. And we're starting things off with the Imperial Trans Antarctic Expedition. So, this is actually a case where the crew managed to make it back home, but it was a struggle. The Imperial Trans Antarctic Expedition, led by Sir Ernest Shackleton, aimed to cross Antarctica from the Weddell Sea to the Ross Sea. In August of 1914, the expedition set sail from England aboard the Endurance, a ship built to withstand the icy Antarctic waters. But in January of 1915, the ship became trapped in the pack ice of the Weddell Sea. And for months, the crew waited, hoping for the ice to finally release its grip. But the Endurance eventually sank. And now the crew is stranded on drifting ice flows where uh, they had to just camp. And when the ice finally broke uh, in April of 1916, the crew sailed in lifeboats to reach Elephant Island. But they realized rescue was going to be unlikely there. So Shackleton and a small crew embarked on an 800 mile open boat journey to South Georgia Island where there was a whaling station. After a grueling 16 day journey across the Southern Ocean, they reached South Georgia Island. Shackleton and a few men then trekked across the island's rugged terrain to reach the whaling station. And after several attempts, Shackleton successfully rescued the remaining crew on Elephant Island in August of that year. The Ken Boric Air Antarctica Crash. Bob Heath was an experienced Canadian pilot. He worked in the Northwest Territories, uh, piloting scientists to ice flows to study polar bears. And during the fall, he would pilot a twin otter all the way to Antarctica. This would be a four day long trip. There he'd spend the entire winter piloting scientists to various research stations. When spring hit, he'd travel back home, making pit stops on his way to visit a family in Winnipeg and Toronto. In 2013, Heath took off on another flight to Antarctica along with two other crew, and they were set to arrive at Terra Nova Bay Research Station, but they never showed up. And two days went by with no sign of the crew until a search and rescue crew spotted the tail of the plane jutting out from a snow-covered mountain in the Queen Alexandra Mountain Range. Uh, the crash was determined to be unsurvivable. What makes the case even more distressing is that the bodies were never recovered, as attempting to do so would be incredibly dangerous. They had just crashed in too precarious a spot. Number eight, Flight 571. On October 13th, 1972, Uruguayan Air Force Flight 571, carrying 45 passengers and crew, including members of the Uruguayan rugby team and their friends and family, crashed into the Andes Mountains in Argentina. 27 of the 45 person crew had actually survived the initial crash, but they had limited food supplies, a little warm clothing, and no way of communicating with the outside world. In order to survive, they resorted to pretty drastic measures. In the days following the crash, the passengers relied on first whatever meager rations they had, but as these supplies just continued to dwindle and hope of rescue began to fade, desperation set in. In order to stay alive, some of these survivors made the difficult decision to resort to they consumed the bodies of the deceased passengers who had died in the crash or succumbed to the harsh weather conditions. And after more than two months in the mountains, two of the passengers finally managed to make contact with three men on horseback, like days out from uh, their initial crash landing site. And uh, these guys ended up going for help. And finally, after 72 days in the wilderness, the remaining 14 survivors were rescued. In at number seven, we have the Swedish Antarctic Expedition. The Swedish Antarctic Expedition of 1901 to 1904, led by Otto Nordenskjold, encountered a crisis when their ship, which was actually called the Antarctic, got stuck in the ice of the Weddell Sea in 1903. They were unable to free the ship, forcing the crew to abandon it. Stranded on the ice, they survived by hunting seals and penguins, melting ice for water, and constructing a basic shelter made out of stone. They 
recently. Waited for rescue for almost a year, and then in November of 1903, the crew managed to launch lifeboats and reached Paulette Island, finding supplies from a previous expedition. They had to camp out for yet another whole winter before finally being rescued in November of 1904 by the Argentine Corvette Uruguay. Uh, so, uh, you know, a happy ending, but a failed expedition. Two winters spent anywhere but indoors, especially in Antarctica. That is a disaster to me. Next on the list is the Mount Erebus disaster. On November 28th, 1979, Air New Zealand Flight 901, a sightseeing flight, crashed into Mount Erebus in Antarctica. The flight was carrying 257 passengers and crew eager to view the Antarctic landscape, and the crash was caused by a navigational error. The flight crew were relying on incorrect coordinates programmed into the aircraft's computer system, believing they were flying over McMurdo Sound, a large body of water, when in reality, they were headed directly towards Mount Erebus, an active volcano. Poor visibility due to overcast conditions and whiteout snow also made it really difficult to visually identify the mountain in time to avoid crashing into it. Upon impact, the aircraft disintegrated, taking the lives of all 257 people on board instantly. The Comandante Ferraz Station Fire. On February 25th, 2012, at the Brazilian Antarctic Research Station in Antarctica, a deadly fire broke out. The fire resulted in the loss of two lives. The fire broke out in a machine room at the station, quickly spreading due to the intense winds and the flammable materials inside. 69 people present at the station were evacuated, but tragically, two members of the Brazilian Navy lost their lives during the incident. The fire completely destroyed a significant portion of the research station, laboratories, living quarters, as well as valuable scientific equipment. It's believed that the fire broke out after an explosion caused by a short circuit. Next, we have the disappearance of Carl R. Disch. Carl Robert Disch was an ionospheric physicist working for the National Bureau of Standards. He disappeared near Bird Station, Antarctica on May 8, 1965, and is presumed dead. Disch was stationed at the radio noise building of Bird Station, where he conducted ionospheric studies. On the morning of May 8, he left the radio noise building to return to the main station complex. When he failed to arrive at the main station within a reasonable time, though, a search was launched. They spotted his trail at first, but the search party had to return to the station to refuel. And by the time they returned, his trail had been covered by drifting snow and he was never found. They tried to increase the visibility of the station. They fired off flares. They used extra floodlights, but there was Still no sign of him. And what made things even worse was the temperatures had dropped as low as minus 42. The search was eventually called off on May 14th and Dish was declared presumed dead. He was only 26 years old. Number three, the Academic Sholkowski. The Academic Sholkowski, a Russian research vessel, became trapped in Antarctic ice on December 24th of 2013. Merry goddamn Christmas. The ship was carrying a team of scientists, journalists, and tourists who were on expedition to retrace the steps of Australian explorer Douglas Mawson. The situation was caused by a combination of rapidly changing weather conditions and large ice flows. And the ship's crew tried to navigate through the ice, but the surrounding ice pack just closed in around them, trapping the vessel. They tried to break through the ice, which didn't work, so they tried waiting for natural movements in the ice pack to create openings, but no luck there either. And the passengers and crew were stuck for over a week until finally a Chinese icebreaker, the Zhu Long, and Australian icebreaker, the Aurora Australis, were sent to assist. And after several days, the passengers and crew members were airlifted to safety by a helicopter from the Zhu Long, while the remaining crew stayed aboard the ship to sail it back home once the conditions were more favorable. Eventually, a break in the ice did allow for the ship to maneuver and escape on January 7th, reaching open water and uh, ending the entire ordeal. The tragic incident involving Jeremy Bailey, David Wilde, John Wilson, and John Ross occurred in 1965 near the Heimfort Mountains in East Antarctica. So this group was traveling on a muskeg tractor and its sledges with a team of dogs running behind them. Three of the men were in the cab of the muskeg and uh, John Ross sat on the sledge at the back 
close to the Huskies. Bailey was driving, Wild and Wilson were scanning the ice ahead. At around 8.30, the dogs alongside the sledge suddenly stopped running and the sledge came to an abrupt halt. Ross realized something was off and turned to find that the muskeg had disappeared from view. He ran up to the first sledge to see that it had wedged into the top of a large crevice that ran across their path. The muskeg had fallen about 30 meters or 100 feet into the crevice with its tracks wedged against one ice wall and the cab flattened against the other. So Ross called out, but there was no response from the men inside the cab down there. After some time, Bailey's voice was actually heard confirming that Wilde had died and both Bailey and Wilson were seriously injured. Ross tried descending into the crevice to help, but it was pretty treacherous. Bailey told Ross, like, don't come down here, don't risk it. But Ross started descending anyway. It was clear that Bailey was also severely injured, unable to move. Ross continued his attempts to reach them, but Bailey eventually stopped responding. The last sound Ross heard from the crevice was a scream from Bailey. Finally, we have the Terra Nova Expedition. The Terra Nova Expedition, led by Captain Robert Falcon Scott, was a British Antarctic expedition that took place between 1910 and 1913. The primary objective was to be the first to reach the South Pole. In January 1911, the expedition established its base, known as Cape Evans on Ross Island in Antarctica. Over the next two years, the team conducted scientific research and made some attempts to reach the South Pole, but on January 17th of 1912, after a long and brutal journey, a five-man party led by Scott finally reached the South Pole, only to be met with a Norwegian flag planted in the ground. Yeah, a Norwegian expedition led by Rald Amundsen had beaten them to the punch just over a month earlier. Uh, there's a photo online of the group just after they'd, uh, they'd reached their destination and uh, made that disappointing discovery. It's pretty rough to look at. Uh, and now, completely disheartened, the team began their long journey back to Cape Evans, but they would never make it back. They faced increasingly harsh conditions on their return journey. By late March of 1912, they were caught in a fierce blizzard, unable to continue their journey, and the men just were just stuck in their tents, basically. They struggled with frostbite, complete exhaustion and starvation. Scott and his two remaining companions, Edward Wilson and Henry Bowers, died in extreme cold and exhaustion in their tent, just 11 miles from a supply depot. With all that said, I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.